So I wanted to kind of open up on a bit of a weird one. But there's an interview that just got released courtesy of Double XL featuring the one and only Playboy Carti, which for myself being a Playboy Carti stan and a big supporter of his music and just loving everything he puts out and the kind of how he carries himself and the fashion revolution, all that malarkey, it is quite rare because he rarely, if, you know, he basically never speaks to press and he basically never gives interviews and kind of keeps himself to himself. So I think we haven't actually had a press run actually um, for a whole lot of red at all. The closest we got to some sort of press run was when he did that um, Instagram live where he was wearing the the mesh top and I think he debuted um, They Thought I Was Gay, but that, whatever that lyric was from that tune. So that's the only time we've actually seen him on video promoting the album or talking about the album anyway, kind of any shape or any kind of way, which might have been a bit of a genius thing to do actually because, you know, well, I'll talk about the album later. But anyway, there's a part of the of the interview where it, to me, feels like he's obviously trying to compensate for something that's happened at home where he really goes at pains to mention or name drop Iggy Azalea who is obviously his baby mum um many many times towards the end of the interview and it just seemed odd it seemed a bit out of the blue it didn't seem really to kind of have any correlation with what the interview was basically talking about there were some questions in there about oh how has the kid changed you as a man and blah 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 but for the most part it was mostly an interview centered around him and his artistic expression so this is basically the bit that Igazelia is obviously taking a bit of umbrage towards. The section interview where the interviewer asks Playboy Kai the following. How do you like being a dad? How has that been for you? He says, I'm a father. You know what I'm saying? You know how it is having kids. I got responsibilities. I, I pay a lot of bills. I take care of a lot of people. I take care of my mum. I take care of my family. I take care of my, of my baby mum. And I take care of my son. There's a lot of people I take care of. So it's like, I got to keep going. What are you most excited about what's coming for you? My son. His birthday is coming up in three weeks. I got him a crazy chain, man. He's going to be your problem. Um, that's, who you need to, that's who you need to have on the cover. He's beautiful. And Iggy, she's a great mum. I love her to death. I'm single. She's single now. But that's one of the best mothers in the world. And that's what you got to put in the book. That's what you got to put in the book. You hear me? I love her to death. She's the best mother in the world. And it just seems strange because from what we know of Playboy Carti and Iggy relationship, it's not the best, right? Famously, she revealed that when she was giving birth to their son, Onyx, that he was allegedly in the studio with Uzi Vert. And I think that's when that clip or that picture got leaked of Playboy Carti in the studio with Uzi Vert playing PlayStation. So they weren't even recording music. That was even the worst part of it. Fair enough, if you're going to go record music and maybe you can, you know, stretch, you can stretch the point and be like, oh, I'm recording music for us so I can maybe give a better future to my son and look after the family, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you would imagine as a dude, there are not a lot of things that you basically have to go to or that you're obliged to go to, but you would imagine like friends' weddings, funerals, um, people you having to go to the hospital, the birth of your first child, for goodness sake, you'd think you'd have to be there, right? You'd think so, but obviously he didn't, he didn't really think that was that important. And then, of course, Iggy Azalea decided to kind of get on social media and basically set the record straight because, you know, when someone says they look after you, which he clearly said in, you know, in a, with his whole chest, he basically said, I take care of that lady, I pay her bills. She was clearly not going to be too fond of someone saying that because the last thing you want as somebody like Nick Azalea, who's kind of, you know, she's a bit of an old, she's older than Playboy Carter, not by that much, but she's a mature girl. She was also around, she also kind of made it or was successful in the music industry for a short period of time before some of these girls were. So she had to kind of scrap and really fight for whatever fame she had or whatever notoriety she, she got. And she's still by, you know, even though she's not in the limelight, she's still able to kind of sustain herself in some way, shape or form. I'm sure the way she looks definitely helped. But you could tell she's a bit of a hustler, right? She probably left Australia on her own with a backpack. And she you know the famous story everyone has. Went to someone's studio to help out. And then that ended up being a creep. And then you do this and you do that. You know what I mean? Like she, she, she for sure, I'm, I'm certain if she ever read a book, it'd be incredibly illuminating because I think people kind of have a have her kind of misconstrued because of how terribly she came into the game. She was a little bit of a dummy dumb in terms of how she operated and maybe the way that she was kind of presented or maybe the way that narrative was spun on her. But in general, you get hustler. You don't get the feeling that she's somebody that's just waiting around for somebody to cut her a check. So she obviously went on social media and said the following, take care of me, LMAO. Let's not get carried away now. Someone replied to her and said, MAO, bitch, I saw that and was like, what? And he says, and she said in reply to that, to that comment, I laughed a lot. 
And then I think she wanted to clarify her statement because I think some people were saying, hey, you know, he was basically trying to give you props and compliment you. Why are you taking it so negatively? But it obviously wasn't props. She was obviously overcompensating for something happening back home. And she, of course, spilled all the tea and she said the following. You've been misled. No, someone said, he said so many nice things about you. That's what you stuck on. And she says as a reply, quote reply, so everyone could see. You've been misled. I don't fuck with a man I'm not even remotely on good terms with claiming he pays my bills. I pay my bills. Secondly, saying nice things for an interview sounds great. But in real life, he talks to me like shit so badly I had to stop all direct contact. Crazy. So she basically goes for an intermediary, it seems like, so they can look after their kid together. Crazy. His team have been calling me about the interview, hoping for my silence because they know what my reaction would be. I do appreciate being called a great mum, but when that's not reflective of what he has to say about me in real life, I'd much rather be left out of it and not be mentioned at all. And I'm sure after this, I will be. Everyone wins. Yay. And it made me think, what is it about some of the greatest artists that we have in the modern era? Because I think we don't really know much about our heroes from yesteryear. I recently watched the Andy Warhol documentary and they tried to spin this narrative about his sexuality and relationships and how that might affect his work. But no one really knew, right? Because back then, you basically got to enjoy people's work. That was it. You might have got insight into their relationships and sex lives and family life if they if they kind of spilled the beans themselves, but it wasn't really a desire or a frothing of the mouth to dig into their personal life. It was mostly, oh, what do they create? Are they funny? Can they dance? Can they sing? Um, are they beautiful? Can they paint? Whatever. That was what you looked at. You didn't look at anything else behind it. So I think to myself, in the modern era, is there a direct correlation between how shitty of a human you are and also how great your art is or how great your artistic expression is? Because I think of two people that come to mind. I think of Kanye West during his whole, from like, let's say from that, that album where it says, um, that album, what's that album called? It's like, sometimes I think I'm bipolar. What's that one called? Is that a yay? Is that what it's called? Is it called yay? Let me see if I can find it here. Sometimes I think I'm bipolar. What album is that one? I don't even have it. I don't have it on my album. I don't, I'm not going to have it on my fucking, um, on my, uh, on my, uh, on my phone because it's terrible. But anyway, you know the album I'm talking about, right? The one where he's basically a picture and you basically writ over it, right? From that period all the way until now, Kanye has been like on like, it seems like a bit of a one man mission to really tell us how he really, no, to basically show us who he really is as a person so that whoever's left being his fans are under no illusions of who, what he stands for and what he's about. That's one thing I credit Kanye for. Say what you want about his personal life and what he gets up to. I don't really try to get involved in that because I don't really give a shit and I just focus on Yacht because Yacht's so good. But... He is quite open and incredibly frank, brute, honest to the point of maybe a fault in terms of how much he puts out of himself. Don't get me wrong, he doesn't say a lot of honest things or he'll probably mislead by leaving things out. But in terms of how he presents himself, he's he very much lays it on the line. This is me. And if you like me, then you like me. If you're not, then you're not. But there's no like, there's no games being played. There's no narratives being spun or whatnot. Whereas I feel like back in the day it was. And I feel like even with Pedro Cart is a good example. He's another person too who, again, we don't get much insight into him, but the things that we do hear about him, we heard about that. Who was, who was that young lady? I forgot her name. She was an artist who wanted to put out the tune that she had with Playboy Carter he featured on. He was dragging his feet about getting it approved. He wouldn't approve the record or his verse. Then she missed dropping it on the day she wanted to drop it. She had to drop it later when the hype died. Like Just unnecessary dickhead shit like that. And then, of course, this stuff with Iggy Azalea. But then when it comes to his artistic expression, from the clothes he wears to the videos he puts out to the live performances to the album right whole or red now has basically for me even for me i'd say for somebody that hated the album didn't think it was good especially coming from die lit die lit i played like legitimately all my life i, I must have played that album back to front at least a hundred times and i mean no skipping no skipping i played that album maybe a hundred times no skip but then when Whole Lot of Red came out, I was like, oh my God, this is terrible. Because it was so all over the place. The sequencing didn't really make sense. There were so many different sounds and textures and moods and stuff. It just didn't work for me. Now, don't get me wrong. I wasn't expecting a dialect number two, but it was just a bit of a letdown. But in the end, he kind of proved us all wrong. Because the moment you saw him perform it live, it suddenly clicked. Suddenly, it became a far better album to listen to, which is weird. I think you could maybe equate even Tyler the Creator's Cherry Bomb. 
is maybe similar to that. That was a little bit of a Marmite album. That's just one of his Marmite albums that kind of divides his fan base, similar to maybe G, um, Jesus with flipping um, Kanye West. But when you listen back to it, it's so fresh, so new, so quote, quote unquote, it's a, it's a kind of cliche term, but it was kind of like ahead of its time in that kind of, in that kind of remark or that kind of side story. But there is definitely something in it, in being a crap person, also being a great artist. But I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because you just focus on yourself the narcissistic, the narcissistic side of things, because to be a really high level, high output artist, you kind of have to abandon or not care for your personal relationships, family and all that. You kind of have to be just really single minded on your goal. Um, it all kind of has to revolve around you. You might be the only per important person in the world. Um, I don't know, man. There's definitely, there's definitely something in it. Definitely something in it because this, this is not like a, this is not like a random thing. Play McCarty isn't the only guy in the world that has issues with their baby mom. But I mean, in terms of like, you know, he obviously knew what he was saying would trigger Iggy. He obviously knew what he was saying was also not indicative or reflective of their relationship. They clearly are not in a good place. They haven't been for ages. So why are you saying my name like this? Why are you talking about me as if we're friends? We're not. You know I mean, we happen to have a kid together. That's it. That kind of energy. But he said it because he wanted to say it and he wanted to, you know, whatever, spin that narrative. But just another example of him being a shitty human. But the album, the music, the singles, even the features, man, like off the grid, Kanye West on Donda, like, come on, brother. Like, just too good. So there is something about being shitty and also being good at art. Something about it. So which, which might explain why really good natured, kind hearted, considerate, lovely, you know, light up the room type people don't really do well when it comes to the arts maybe in terms of like imagine like stand-up comedy who's the really genuine person that you've seen who's come from a very balanced family life a mum and a dad a dog a fence an older sister that looked after you know, a younger sister and an older brother like the like the kind of classic americana family who's also gone on to be really funny on stage how can you man your life is quote unquote perfect you've got a trust fund your dad flipping comes and sees all your shows your mum makes makes you dinner every time you come around i don't know whatever do you know what i mean like it's very difficult to ha to what because you need some darkness to tap into that's what basically i'm saying there has to be a darkness there has to be a a sense of selfish ambition that's burning inside of you and you can't really have that if you've grown up in a family where you were told to like share and to have morals and to be fair and to have manners and you never saw your dad kind of raise his voice at your mom like all those kind of things are they're going to make you a nice person how are you going to be a nice person and then also get on the track and start talking about you know smashing hoes or drinking lean or popping perks or you know stacking money or vvs's it's not going to happen so i don't know maybe there is something into it. i don't know maybe i'm thinking too much about it i don't know if this is actually a true thing but i'd love to know your opinion on, on the matter so please let me know in the comments down below that'd be much 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 appreciated